the Ryman Auditorium. It stands just a block of the street in downtown Nashville, known affectionately as Music Row, an unassuming old theater. The Ryman Auditorium could easily be mistaken as just another building in any city. Indeed, if one did not know what the Ryman was famous for, one would likely just ignore the brick covered church shaped structure. But the Ryman is one of the most important buildings in Nashville and one of the most legendary shrines in all of American pop culture history. The Ryman is a historic full time and current part time home of the Grand Ole Opry. The show responsible for making country music a part of American life. When the Ryman first opened, though, one could not imagine its impact. Country music was not yet a genre, and the building was constructed not as a music venue, but rather as a church. Which probably explains why it looks so much like a church on the outside. Thomas Ryman, a Nashville saloon owner and riverboard captain, had funded the building as a space to house the famed revivalist preacher Samuel Porter Jones. Ryman had actually gone to see Jones speak in 1885 with the intention of heckling the pe preacher for a lark. Well, for anyone who doesn't know what heckling is, heckling is to interrupt a public speaker with derisive or aggressive comment or abuse. abuse. A preacher for a lark. Instead, Jones or Oratory won Ryman over, and Ryman de decided then and there to build a per permanent revival tent for Jones. The Ryman Auditorium opened in 1892 as a Union Gospel Tabernacle. Jones did use it for a series of revival meetings in the 1890s, and it became a regular church for all the pastors too. Seeing an opportunity to make money on the venue, Ryman himself built a stage in 1901 to host touring operas from New York, the Union Gospel Tabernacle, thus became a home of both religion and culture in downtown Nashville. Upon Ryman's death in 1904, Jones suggested the building be renamed for its founder and unanimous applause supported the decision. Thus, with no objection, was born the Ryman Auditorium. For anyone who doesn't know what unanimous is, unanimous is... Unanimous was... If the thing is unanimous, it means everyone agrees on it. Over the next four decades, the Ryman transitioned from a church in the prem, permanent auditorium. President Theodore Roosevelt and William Howard Taft spoke there, as did Helen Keller and Anne Sullivan Massey, Macy, Will Rogers, Charlie Chaplin, Harry Houdini, and Enrico Caruso all had events there too. Judging by the list of names to appear there, the Ryman had clearly become an important Nashville institution. But in 1943, it would become even more important to the city as, the, as it became the permanent, permanent home of the Grand Ole Opry, the birth of country. The Grand Ole Opry is a radio program that airs nationally out of Nashville and features live performance by the biggest names in country music. While today Nashville is synonymous with the genre before the Grand Ole Opry existed, this was not the case. The generous rise along with the show's rise is a big reason Nashville grew into a city it is today. Nashville history is not that dissimilar from that of the other river towns that dominated culture life in America. Cities on rivers tend to be breeding grounds for motley musical blends. For anyone who doesn't know what motley is, motley is a uh, Motley is encouragingly varied in appearance or character. 
is no coincidence that New Orleans bird jazz, given the way cultures floated down both the both down the Mississippi and in from the Gulf of Mexico to meet there. Similarly, St. Louis helped develop blues with white merchants coming down the Mississippi from the north and black migrants meeting them on the move from the south. And we all know about the role of Memphis, another Mississippi River town, in creating rock and roll. So it is with Nashville. The Cumberland Zip River opened Nashville out to the country folk singers of the Appalachians, as well as the blues of the Deep South. And its location in the center of the South made Nashville receptive to the blues from St. Louis too. Thus, it was almost inevitable that country music, that blend of Appalachian folks and black blues, would be incubated there. Nashville become the, became the home of many of the genre's earliest stars. And uh, recording studios and concert venues made Nashville a city that all country performers had to pass through regularly. As a geographic center of the south and the eastern part of the Midwest, Nashville also became an important radio town. And this radio signal would send stretch for hundreds of miles uninterrupted since there were no other cities or mountains to interfere with signal. Since the city has so many performers stopping though, through, it seems only logical to feature them on the radio. In 1925, WSM put together a weekly showcase of these acts, eventually calling the program the Grand Ole Opry. The show grew in popularity and fanfare, and by the 1940s, the show was even picked up nationally by the NBC Red Network. As such, the show needed a large venue to support its larger audience. The program moved around various Nashville theaters until landing in the Ryman in 1943, just years before the start of country music's golden age. The Ryman as such became the host for the best known country acts of all time including Hank Williams, Johnny Cash, Hank Snow, Loretta Lynn, Kitty Wells, Dolly Parton, Merle Haggard, and Patsy Cline. The auditorium even hosted a young Elvis Presley, though he had a contract with the Opry's rival program, the Louisiana Hayride. The Ryman today, in 1974, the Grand Ole Opry opened a venue outside Nashville to house the show during busy tourist seasons. It still performs regularly out of a Ryman though during the off season. Today, the Ryman Auditorium is officially recognized as a national historic landmark, even while it continues to hold some of the biggest acts in music and film. Vis visitors today still even sit in pews in honor of a revival show tradition embraced by the building's creator more than a hundred years ago. It is a welcome throwback to country music traditions and a welcome reminder that downtown Nashville was not always for the glass, skyscrapers, and condominiums. More than anything, the Ryman serves as a bridge between America's cultural past, present, and future. In paragraph one, the author described the Ryman Auditorium as Impressive in appearance and Im unimportant historically. Well, there's no, <laughs> there's no mention that it's, it, it's not mentioned in here. The fact that it mm, is uh, significant in appearance is not mentioned here. An unassuming old theater means that it's Im un unimpressive in appearance. So yeah, A, B, um, A and B are are not correct. Unimpressive in appearance, but important historically. The, this sentence, but the Ryman is one of the most important building in Nashville and one of the most legendary shrines in all of American pop culture history. So it, it must be unimpressive in appearance, but important historically. Right, I, I got one point for that. According to the author, the Ryman Auditorium was originally built to 
how the religious meet make money make money we have the way to make money is a use later thing important opportunity to make money on the venue so it, it could be correct it couldn't be correct hold concerts like there like the originally there was no uh, purpose for this to hold concerts and the first uh, and the author says that the Ryman Auditorium first open open uh, ra rather as a church so yeah it it must be the to hold religious meetings right according to a passage the Ryman Auditorium first opened in the Ryman Auditorium opened in 1892 In paragraph three, the word "anonymous" most nearly means. Let me highlight this for to to be seen easier. As I said before, when something is unanimous, it means everyone agrees on it. So it must be. Uh, uh, what is laudatory? Spreading praise and commendations. Lot of trees. Discord. What is discordant? Well, discordant it means in, in in disagreement. This is opposite of unanimous. So what is uproarious? Uproarious is uh, disorderly and or hilarious. So, yeah, it could be one harmonious and two lot of three but um, oh it's harmonious okay unanimous means fully in agreement and without any objection in paragraph three the author recorded the death of Ryman and Samuel Potter Jones suggested that the Union Gospel Tabernacle be renamed for its founder this suggestion was supported by Unanimous applause. The author implies that unanimous relates to supportive then. He or she goes on to state that there were no objections to Joe's suggestion, making it clear that unanimous means fully supportive. Of the choice, choice A is closest in meaning them. As harmonious means free from disagreement or dissent. Choice A is therefore correct. Paragraph 3 such states that unanimous applause rose in support of a suggestion that in the Union Gospel Tabernacle be rechristened the Ryman Auditorium and that there were no objections. This implies that unanimous means fully supportive. Choice B is incorrect then because scatters mean in, means in intervals and not all in the same direction, nearly the opposite of unanimous. Paragraph 3 states that unanimous applause rose in support of suggestions that the Union Gospel Tabernacle be rechristened the Ryman Auditorium and that there were no, no objections. This implies that unanimous means fully supportive. So I see it's incorrect then, because disorder means disagreeing, the opposite of unanimous. And paragraph 3 states that Unanimous applause rose in support of a suggestion that Union Gospel Tabernacle be renamed the like, same as the first, uh, same as the question B. So choice D is in, uh, incorrect then because uproarious means loud. Then and the author does not suggest that there's unanimous applause was loud. So choice E is incorrect because laudatory means expre expressing praise. While the author does imply that the, the decision to rename the church was supported, he or she does not imply that unanimous has the same, same meaning as praising. 
So yeah, I got it wrong last time. That part. The purpose of the paragraph six is. Oh my God. <laughs> Argue that the Ryman Auditorium is the true birthplace of country music. Yeah. Country music actually, you know, actually from uh, another part. Huh? Imply that rivers are vital for trading economies to survive. Well, there is no point that uh, trading economies in here. So, yeah. There's suggest that country music history is similar to that of other genres. As we can see, the, a lot of other country generals is from um, is from people from um, from other places downstream and um, down the river. So, country music is could be similar. Great, you earn. Paragraph seven implies the country music of the age occurred at the same time as. Who is this? This is a challenge question, so it could be very hard question. So, Southern Blues mixed with a, a Plasian folk music is already there. So, radio was still growing in popularity. No. Uninterrupted. Yes. Well, as the, in the passage, the program moved around Nashville theaters until landing in the Ryman in 1943, thus years before the start of country music golden age. So, so yeah, the the Grand Ole Opry was was set up as the home of the the Ryman was set up as the home of the Grand Ole Opry. Yes. According to a passage, each of the following performed at the Ryman as part of a Grand Ole Opry, except past decline. No, nope. there is there is past decline. Hank William, Johnny Cash, Hank Snow, Loretta Lynn. Yeah, there is Loretta Lynn. Merle Haggard. There is Merle Haggard. So Will Rogers doesn't perform at Grand Ole Opry and as part of Grand Ole Opry. The author primarily considers the Ryman Authorium to be this is more than anything. Primarily considers means considers this thing, this idea more than any idea. So. And as the last question, uh, last sentence of the paragraph, he says that more than anything, the Ryman serves as a bridge between America's culture, past, present, and future. So yeah, it must be a link between past and present. Well, I got a, I got the point for that. Will the result? Yes, I passed the test. Wait, how, how did I get out of this? So yeah, I got 88% on this. And uh, let me see my progress. The Ryman Auditorium was at grade level 10, so... Well, it, it rises up to... a. Uh, Great level 10 and last one. And my lexile level on this um, quiz is 1,060. 1, there is 